there and back again. Ma ha ka wa ta hi. He ta wa ka ha ma. There and back again. Do you see? Multidimensional beings are we. From the energy of the first light. Through the calendar of the light of days. With the veil down. We were in a haze. One to ten and back again. In the darkness we held each other tightly. Until the light came. The dragon blood. The Taki. The Akashic potentiality. At the speed of memory. We came. There and back. From the I am to the we are, we came far, there and back again. Hello, hello, hello. It's Mark Outward here. Mark Outward Show, Adventures in a Cosmic Suit. It is uh, currently Tuesday the 12th of March at about 3 p.m. in the afternoon in UK time, GMT. And uh, today I have a guest from the east side of the United States, who I've been watching for a couple of years. And um, as you regular viewers will know, the nature, the true nature of reality is one of the questions that I try to ask on a regular basis on the show, amongst all the other questions that need to be asked in this extremely exciting time to be alive. And I came across... Um, Mud Fossil University on YouTube, I think it was a couple of years ago, and I was blown away by the information that's presented there by Roger Spur, which is, let's get him on. Let's get him on and find out, shall we? Roger, are you there? I am here, Mark. Hello, how are you? Good, my friend, good. Hold on one second, I'm getting set up myself. You, you, no do, you mind if I, do, you, do you mind if I record this myself? Of course you can record it yourself, yeah. All right, I'm just going to do that, so... Anyway, yeah, this is uh, it is an exciting time to be alive. There's no question about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah not if exciting is always the right word, but yeah, it, yeah things are moving very, very fast now, and I think it's um, it's on a acceleration pace. It's uh, it's an un unveiling. We're just starting to understand the reality of the world we live in. It's just incredible to think how misunderstood things are well that's i don't I, I think you were out of the room but i was just playing one of my poems there called there and back again uh which i wrote a couple of years ago which is based upon the title of um, bilbo baggins book in in the lord of the rings and um in, the reason that came up for me is because i have a, i saw a tolkien interview in 1959 in amsterdam where tolkien said on the radio that um, the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit was all based on the true history of the earth, which I've always been fascinated by. And there's a line in there. It says, when the veil is down, when the with the veil down, we were in a haze. And I thought that was appropriate for today because we have been under this huge veil. And you know, I've talked on my show regularly about the fact that everything we know about history, the true nature of reality, what it is to be a human, souls, God, everything has all been, we've been lied to our entire lives. And I imagine you must have felt this throughout your life that led you to the work that you do. Well, I, to be perfectly honest, no, I had, I had no, I was just, I was just one of the sheep and I would just, I, you know, I, I, ne I never really got along with everybody else's opinion of things because I really, what I was into was, was, um, atomic physics. Okay. Uh, and I realized that that was wrong. It was just totally wrong. There was no possible way you could have one gigantic proton, which was a positive and had one positive charge and had one tiny, tiny, tiny electron that had the same charge, but was opposite. And they wouldn't attract and slam together. It was ridiculous. Absolutely, totally ridiculous. And I had, my theory was dipole electron flood theory. So the electrons are not just negatives, they're positive and negative. Mm -hmm. And then they're, they're just like little bar magnets. Anyway, I 
that was the start of me not getting along with the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> how long? How long ago was that, Roger? Oh, that was in 1968. I was in the army in 1968. Oh. Okay. I'm 75. I'm 75 years old. So I I was in the army in 68, and they had me working on Nike Hercules missile sites because I had worked for General Electric rebuilding motors. And anyway, um, yeah, that goes way back. And then I went into college right after that. And the, the instructor he had no interest whatsoever other than forcing me to say what he told me to say. And I, I, was, I was way ahead of him. I was so far ahead of him, it was ridiculous. But he, he said, no, I'm, at the end of the reporting, he said, I'm going to give you a B, a B. I said, no, you're not. You're going to give me an A. <laughs> he said, no, I'm not. He says, he, and I swear to God, this is a fact. He said, I've never given anybody an A. I'm telling, that's a fact. And I said, bullshit, you're going to give me an A, my friend. And he said, no, I'm not. And I said, yes, you are. I said, I'll tell you what. We're both going to figure out the dipole molecular moments of, of I think it was potassium chloride or something. Some real deep, deep thing. And I said, and we'll see who gets it right, and we'll present it to the dean. And he said, all right, I'll give you the A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's a fact. That's an absolute 100% fact. Well, we, we, we have two things in common already, because I was in the military in my young, younger days in the UK, and I um, also walked out of my physics class over an argument about whether light traveled in straight lines or not. Because And, and, the, and she... The teacher just would not budge from what was in the textbook and i was like well you're not teaching me anything and i just walked out and i stopped yeah they won't they won't listen it's 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 you listen to them or they fail you the problem is right now people don't realize the system we live under they think academia is here to present evidence and theories and so forth to 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 explain the anomalous things that we see nobody can explain and nobody can tell me where god came from i don't even know if god could tell me where he came from how's he gonna know how would if if all of a sudden everything was just here there's that's that is a road to frustration there's no way to ever explain who god is but i have to assume that there's one omnipotent powerful god that subdivides the rest of the the universe into little realms and regions. Have you ever read the book Urantia? No. What a freaking mind blower that is, my friend. What's it called? It's called Urantia. U R A N T I A. Oh. Oh. This was this was a guy. It was supposedly he was going into these fits of just total, like, babbling on and saying all kinds of crazy things. And his wife got a hold of this, um, these psychiatric people, and they started recording what he was saying. And it was absolutely just mind-blowing if you read it. you got to really get into it, though, and read it. But it, it describes how he was talking about how they selected John the Baptist and Elizabeth to be the to bring Jesus Christ out and how they selected Mary and Joseph to be the parents of Jesus. And, you know, all of this God stuff is, is absolutely, in my mind, 100 percent real. Now, if 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 you want to just blow their minds real quick, you want to do this? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think. All right, I am going to go into Google Earth, and we're going to look at at um, Typhon. Great, but I have actually heard of your auntie, but to my great shame, I never purchased it. I did look at that website about a year ago, but I'm going to go and read it now. Oh, you Roger? Yeah, you can see. You can get a, all you got to do is look it up online. You, you can just watch it, or you know. You don't have to buy it. I, I'm reading it now, and um, it's uh, it's mind blowing. As a matter of fact, hold on. Let's see. Oh, 
Let me see if I got it up here. No, I don't have it up here. But anyway, let's let's go back to the. Can you see my Google Earth? Yeah, we've got Google Earth there. All right. Now, in Apollodorus, which is one of the earliest texts written, it talks about the creation of Earth and the gods, and Earth being Gaia, who yeah. was a, a, literally a, a female entity that could give birth. And she mated with the sky and had all of these gigantic monsters. And and they were they were literally eaten, put into Tartarus inside of her. And then she gave birth to this dragon right here. All right, and here's the dragon. All right, here's his head, and his throat runs all the way down here. Is that is that Morocco? It is. This is the dragon in Morocco. This is Typhon. That's where I used to live. <laughs> oh, really? I used to live in Marrakesh, yeah. All right, well, Marrakesh is up in here somewhere. No, it's further down. It's not near the coast. Oh, it isn't? No? Okay. Because they just had an earthquake there. Yes, they did. Very bad one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking into that because all of these earthquakes, you know, are body cavities that are collapsing and shifting of the bodies as they decompose under the earth. Yeah, this thing here, this is a dragon, and it goes the whole length of North Africa, all the way over to here. 1500 miles or so. Yeah, well, it's up to 1200. 1200. And here's his tail, which has these are dragon scales. You see the dragon scales? Yeah. And this is like a swale down in here. In other words, it's higher up here and higher over here. And it, the blood has run down in here, and that's what's running out is blood. All right, that's blood and bodily fluids. These are the dragon scales. Look at how unbelievable they are, and how many layers of tissue that are different. All of those are different layers of his scale. Yeah, it's extraordinary. And they're all made with different chemistry. All right, anytime you see a different color, it's a different transition metal. Transition metals make the colors, and they are in the blood. Blood is nothing but 100% saturated with transition metals, and they are the things that bring all the chemistry around your body. So when you see things running off like that, and the red and the black up here, all of this runoff from where my cursor is down, mm -hmm. this, that's just body fluids. That are running out of this dead, decaying dragon. And Can here's. You... Go ahead. I'll just ask you a question because I've seen you talk about this dragon in North Africa on your YouTube channel. And I don't know if I missed something, but I, I can't get around my head. And I might be jumping ahead here, so I apologize if I am. What I can't get my head around is how something that big could exist on a plane this size. Well, that's a, a totally valid question. Now, what do we know about the Earth right now? And I, there is no question whatsoever that the Earth is a round ball, and it's approximately 25,000 miles ar around. It's about 8,000 miles across in diameter. That, that, that there is no question of. Now, how did they exist here? I cannot tell you how. They did come from space. Mars is identical to Earth. There's no difference whatsoever. 100% the same. It has gigantic creatures that were there too. And it was killed by Venus, who was the one that created the great flood on Earth. I know that sounds confusing. Here's what happened. If you read Velikovsky, who was, he wrote Worlds in Collision. What happened was, and this wasn't that long ago. This was only 3,500 years ago. Jupiter itself gave birth, literally gave birth to the Venus. And in the, in the ancient texts, it, say, it says um, Athena emerged from, from Jupiter's forehead. But, it, you know, that's, it was, he, he actually, Jupiter has a, has a vagina and gave birth 
to Venus. Venus came as an avenger to get rid of all these giant creatures on Earth. And it almost hit Earth, and that's what created the giant flood that created all of these dead, gigantic creatures. And that was to wipe the Earth clean of all of this nonsense. Now, prior to that, the Earth could have been one big, flat, like, round disk spinning, because that's what, that's what happens. Things congeal. Now, it could have been vastly wider and, and flatter. Yes, there's no question about that. I can't tell you. It said it was chaos. Now, what does chaos mean? To me, it means just disorderly whatever. Mm. And, and so I can't tell you how they how could they be this big, but they're every, all, all over the earth. It's not just this one. And have you seen the way he attacks a fish? Yeah. Yeah. This dragon here. And again, this is his throat, all the way right, runs all the way down to his stomach. This is his stomach area. These are his legs. All right, and all the way down, and he's, this is nothing but dragon scales, all the way down here. You see, this is throat. Now, in the ancient texts, it says that Zeus cut his throat with his great and mighty sword. And that's exactly what happened here. His throat was cut right across there. And he died here. This is all blood. Back up here, this is bodily fluids. The fluid is this brownish looking stuff. That's like lymph. It's a, it's a, it's a serum. And it just washes out of your body when you die. This is a different story. This is blood. This was a cut. And that red is the blood, and it turns black as it, as it oxidizes. Mm -hmm. And this was his throat was cut. And this is on ancient maps, too. This was on ancient maps, showing that he was all the way across North Africa. They knew about him. And it was Typhon, and it was written, he, he was just gigantic. And he was spitting out all this toxin. So let's go back to his head. All right. This should blow some people away if they're paying attention and they're interested. I think they're already blown away. <laughs> well, here's, here's his throat coming up. Now, you see all that yellow stuff and this little fluty looking stuff going down his throat? Mm -hmm. you, know, you see that in all the dragon parades. They have that fluty looking flashy stuff, fluffy stuff going down his throat up to his head. That is where the venom comes. The yellow is the venom. And it comes down here. You see it coming up here, and it comes right down through his beards. These are his beards. Mm -hmm. And coming out of the front beard, the back one does something. I don't know what it's doing. You see what it's doing over here? Mm. That's some serious chemistry. I don't know what it, this one's doing, whether it's mixing a cocktail or what. But the front one is where all of the really heavy-duty stuff comes out. See how nasty that is? Yeah. Now, that was, he's spitting that at the fish, which is right below him. And in the ancient texts, it says Typhon, with his, his fiery, uh, whatever it says. I, I'll read you the text in a minute. But it's, it's spit at the gods, throwing hindled, curling, flaming, this and that. And they all changed themselves into animals to try to hide from him. He was supposed to kill the gods. That was his job, to kill the gods. And they saw him rushing at him, at them. And they changed themselves into animals. This one didn't get away. It changed into a fish. And that fish got hit by this dragon spit. That's a big fish. Yeah, yeah. Full size. <laughs> now, this dragon spit comes down here. You see it? And it hits the fin. Up here is his fin. This is kind of floppy sort of stuff. No big fleshy interaction here. But when you hit here, you're into his flesh. You see where my cursor is? Mm -hmm. Now, the toxin has actually eroded the top of the fish's fin, I mean, of the fish's scales, right through it. 
and we're down into his vascular network. All right, this is veins, arteries, lymph node, lymph system, capillaries, arterioles. Now, if you know anything about biology, you are fed, your entire body is fed with refreshed, clean blood, which is artery blood, and it's red. You see these big arteries pushing down through here? Mm-hmm. Now, those arteries carry your good, clean blood and that, all these little tiny fringes coming out here all over the place. They, they pass over every single cell in your body and they absorb what they need. And then it gets down to what they call the capillaries, which are right here. These little pinchers. And they pinch it off. And then whatever's left comes down into the veins, which is the black. These are veins. Mm -hmm. So here's the here's the process. Remember this: all of that blood coming down, and these I, I believe these are either blood cells, or because the, the green green things grow on blood. Red blood makes everything grow. You see, nothing's growing here. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's just lymph fluid. It's not, it has it has no refreshing blood. This either could there could be some huge blood cells in here. But everywhere you see these little dots is where something can grow. Blood makes things grow. They sell blood meal. You buy blood meal, it makes your plants grow fabulously. Yeah, well, anchovies are very good for uh, making things grow. And this is a giant anchovy we're looking at here. Well, anything that has blood in it will make anything grow very well. So, do you, know what the, do you know what the nickname for Marrakesh is? No. The Red City. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, you know what Petra is? Petra is nothing more than a big chunk of muscle. Mm. I'll show you that in a minute. But look at how big we're talking about here. Oh, here, here they come down to all of these red art artery branches into the arterioles and the, the blood vessels all the way down to the capillaries. And here's the capillaries. Now, in addition, there's something they, they know very little about is the lymph system. I can see it right here. You see all these little tiny lines? Mm -hmm. that, that's the lymph ducts. They don't even know hardly know about this. This was just discovered, and I discovered it. In 2018, they made a paper about this fluid-filled highway, and there it is right here. These are all the fluids that run through your body that carry enzymes and bacteria and all that stuff. It's yeah. completely outside of your veins and arteries and that that is your lymph fluid and it's yellow arteries are red veins are black lymph is yellow so now it this is that's the whole network of your system of the fluids right there and you can actually visually see it right down to the lymph now what happens with the lymph the lymph is there to protect you and what how does it protect you with enzymes can i show that happen yes i can <laughs> <laughs> now remember that nasty stuff coming down that re really red and green and nasty nasty stuff well here it is down hitting the fish so let's back out and make sure we know where we are here's the body of the fish being attacked all right by that nasty stuff now we just saw we're eight through the scales. Well, there's lymph nodes as well as, as well as lymph fluid filled highway. And that lymph is all of that brown fluid. Now look at what's happening over here. All that brown fluid that I showed you is trying to attack the green invasive chemistry. Harish, you understand what I'm saying? The green nasty stuff is attacking this guy's body. It sends its lymph fluids over there because those are the protectors. Those are, they will try to take away this nasty stuff and bring it down to the lymph nodes, which it does. But it's overwhelming. You see all that brown stuff? That's the lymph fluid. And here it is coming down to the lymph nodes. Anybody that's a doctor should be look, watching this and because they're, they're going to learn something. They, they, they can't even understand this. They never saw this before. This is like having 
the most powerful electron microscope in the world mm. and watching it actually happen. So here's all that lymph coming down from the invading noxic stuff. And it's carrying all that noxic stuff down here to be filtered out of the body. We can't do it. It's uh, coming in here from every which way. And it's so toxic that it's killing. And it did kill this lymph node. It's dead. You see down here, you see these, you see that? Mm -hmm. That webbing is all filtration to filter out all the bad stuff. Well, there's too much bad stuff to filter out. And it's it's just overwhelmed. So that, that's what happens when you get lymph cancer. You foam. Yeah. You cannot deal with the toxins coming in. And the only way you can deal with toxins is by creating enzymes. The only way you create enzymes is with bacteria. So what it ends up doing is it has killed the bacteria. You can't create the enzymes. You can't create the enzymes. You can't fight a back against this invasion. Not only this lymph node died, this one here is dead too. Mm. Another lymph node here, see it? They come and it's got the same filtration devices down here, the same stuff. It can't handle it. Isn't that something? No, oh, it's extraordinary. Here's another one dead. Overwhelmed. Normally, what would happen is this this nasty stuff here, which you look at it's sparky even. It's like just it's just deadly, deadly stuff. It's trying to hold it back, but it's getting through. And it's killing the bacteria that lives in here who are the workers. Mm. All right, so it's it's sent in here, and it, that's why it's all turned black here. It killed all the workers that were living in here. And now they can't disassemble all of these bad products that are coming in. That's what enzymes do. They're breakers. They break things up. Yeah. And you don't have a bacteria. You can't create the enzyme. Enzymes make bacteria. I mean, bacteria makes enzymes. There is no other way that you can get an enzyme other than a bacteria. So what we have just witnessed is an assault on a body. And what that assault really breaks down to is a destruction of your, your protector forces, which are bacteria. And all of these lymph nodes, this whole line of lymph nodes is being destroyed. They're all being killed. So, uh, Roger, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Are we looking at something frozen in time? Because, you know, was this dragon midway through eating this fish when something happened and they all died? And Well, it's when you say frozen in time, they're just, they're part of the landscape. Yeah, I understand that. But it's like, it's like, it's like we're looking at, the, like, it's just mid, mid, mid lunch and then two. It all stopped. Well, he was fighting the fish. He was trying to kill the fish, and, and Zeus, with his great and mighty sword, cut his throat right there and killed him and hurled him to earth. So they were in the sky, apparently. Ah. It, it has to be because they were, they were hurled to earth. That Okay, now it makes sense. because So, yeah. And can I ask you, how did you first discover this kind of thing? God told me to look. Okay, good. We've got something else in common as well. Good. Well, it's a fact. It's a, and I'm not yeah. kidding. I'm just no, telling you. I believe it. 100%. Well, did, I, did I tell you about how this actually did start with me? No, please do. Yeah, well, here's what happened. I retired from business. You know, I had a business and I retired and, and uh, just, I don't really remember how far into my retirement, but it was, this goes back 15 years ago. And uh, I'm 75 now, so I was just barely retired. Or maybe I wasn't even retired when it started. I can't remember. But I woke up one morning. I said to my wife, I said, there's something in the woods calling my name. And I went out, and I started looking around, thinking maybe i find an arrowhead or something like that. And I, I found some stuff, but it, I thought it was a big egg. And I tried, to, oh, look, I found an egg. And everybody called me an idiot, of course. And I said, well, if there was one, maybe there'll be another one. So I go, on oh, this time I find giant stuff. I mean, 
giant, giant stuff. I think I might have this on here. Here's, here's what I found. All right, you see my screen? Yeah. All right. I found these, I found this giant hand. And that's a left hand. And if you look carefully at it, you see that little cleave right there? Put your left hand out in front of you and pinch it together. That's where that cleave is yeah. between the pad of your hand. Then stretch it way back, and you're going to see this, which is the tendon that runs to your fingers that run out here, the middle finger. Yeah. All right. And then this is a little hollow in it, and you have this part, a padded part, that runs down to your little finger, which would run off this way. So the thumb goes this way. This is the the palm. All right. There was bones attached. You see this round spot here? Mm -hmm. The round spot here. There's bones attached all over the place. And there's a lot of, lot of stuff going on in the bottom of your hand. Now, you see this silver stuff? And then it gets to the, to the mud looking stuff. Mm -hmm. The silver is what's called grip skin. And it's on your hands and your feet and your fingertips and the palms of your hands up in the fluffy stuff. You know, it's more, it's not quite so thick. But here it's just peeling off because it is a totally separate, it's almost like having a glove on your hand. That's what your skin is. Mm. And, this, and on these grip skin surfaces, I call it grip skin, they call it friction skin traction skin it's a it's where you do your work it has to be it, it just sloughs off and it has no real vitality to it it's just like a, a rubber glove so i found this and then i found the fingers tips to go with it and knuckles and everything else so i had that and then i also found this this one right here <laughs> now this is this is way bigger this finger tip this is a finger tip it's as big as that hand. It's three feet long from the back here to the front here, which is the front where the fingertip is. This is the fingernail. Follow my cursor around. That's the fingernail. And it is in flawless, perfect shape. And this guy took good care of his fingertips. And it was perfect. Now, this piece that's over here, I broke that off. I took a little sledgehammer and I whacked it to try to get down inside because you couldn't get any blood. I want to get this DNA tested. And I knew there's a lot of blood deep inside of fingertips, but they're not on the surface. Now, so this is a fingertip. This little round pad here is a little, this is a little piece that fits in between every bone so that they don't rock against themselves. That's the protector. And then you got your vein and your artery. So I broke this piece off. And it came right off right next to your fingernail. Now, if you look at your fingernail, you're going to see right up here, you still have fingerprints. So I also found fingerprints. And here's the fingerprints. Right there. All right, now. My thumb is as wide as one fingerprint ridge, as one ridge in a fingerprint. My thumb is that wide. Now, as I said, the grip skin peels right off. You see this? Mm -hmm. This was just as that's exactly like that silver stuff I showed you before, peeling off of the hand. Remember? Yeah. Here's, here's the hand. Let's just make sure we all remember what, uh, what I do. Close it up. I can see it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. All right. That's what's peeling off. And there's no, you can't get any blood from this, from that silver stuff. There's no blood. That's almost entirely silicon. 50 times more dense with silicon. Very, very tough stuff. So what I had to do was break that piece off. And I did. And it came right off. And it came off just like a scab. The back of this thing is just like a scab. It just peeled right off. It wasn't even stuck. It just popped right off when I hit it. And then down inside, it was saturated with blood. So I pulled the blood out of there. And here's what happens inside of fingertips. You see that? Mm -hmm. They're saturated with blood. Totally saturated. And the blood is the preservative. So wherever there was blood, lungs, hearts, fingertips, toes, 
that's where your concentration of blood is. And the reason it's concentrated at your fingertips and toes is because that's where it changes from the vein, from the arteries coming down and to the vein coming back. All right, so I found that. So I got the hand from a four feet wide, approximately three feet wide, somewhere in there. I can't remember now, but this fingertip is three feet long. The one I just showed you, that fingertip right here. And I have the fingerprints. So I decide I'm going to get it DNA tested. So I drill down inside of it to get the blood out. And you get blood out of rocks easy. You see this? This is a, a, a rock. There's a bone. And it's drying out. And as it dries out, this is a blood scab. And so no question it's a scab of blood. They say, oh, that's just iron oxide. I say, what do you think blood is made of? <laughs> and it's just unbelievable. It's and they, unbelievable. Say, they say you can't get blood from a stone, you know, oh, to wait, I, hide it away from this, don't they? Oh, they have no idea. So now I move the scab away. And this is what's called clotting fiber. It's a fat, fibrogen, it's called. And it's a, it's a fabric that's built into your blood. And it, it delivers it here where you have a gash or a wound to almost make like a Band-Aid. And then the blood seals over the top of it until it scabs off and just falls off. So I took the scab and moved so you can see everything here at once. And then I moved everything all together so you can see where it came from. And the black one, you see the black one here where that black tube comes up? Yeah. That was That's the vein. This is the artery where the red tube comes up. So you got an artery and a vein. And it, that's how your body works, is arteries and veins. <clears throat> so now, I get DNA tests and CAT scans done. I have a lung here too. This is the same size as a human lung, as ours. And this one had blood coming out of it. Out of each one of these little bob blobs here, blood came out. And literally blood, liquid red blood. Now, it was in the mud here. So this side here, the whole thing was flipped over. So this side was down in the mud. And this just filled with silicates because of the heavy silicate nature of this flood. And the reason there were so many silicates is that we almost got impacted by Venus, which literally stopped the Earth from rotating and sloshed all the waters all over the earth. And they came from deep, 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 where there's what they call a salacious ooze. If you want to look that up, salacious ooze is at the bottom of the oceans. And it's a very dense layer of sil silicates. And that came to the surface, and they ca ca caused a supersaturated silicate fluids. And they filled in all the, anywhere where there was holes and voids, they filled in. Now, this one didn't have any holes or voids, so it just became feldspar, which is no more than silicates. <laughs> hmm. Feldspar is aluminum silicates, if you want to look that up. And feldspar coats virtually every rock there is, because they all died in a great flood. Now, these holes here, you see these little holes? These are all the alveoli, which is this. And, and they filled in with either, down here, they still had blood in them. And that's the blood that leaked out right here. But up at the top, the blood drained down. Because this side would have been down on the ground laying here like this. And that side would have been sticking up. This one here just laid flat. And, and all of the pleur, which is the coating of the lung. This is, this is like a rubber bag coats the lung. Now, I took a sample. I drilled into this thing and took blood out of this. And I drilled into the giant one, this one here, and got blood out of that. And literal blood. I mean, it's just like blood. And then I drilled into the other one, this one here, and I got blood. Well, I took it out of the fingertip, which I had CAT scan. See this here? Yeah. This is the fingertip. Of that same hand. Now, the only way you can tell this is a fingertip is this little crease right here. See it? Mm -hmm. That's where the fingernail was. Right there. And the only way you can tell this is because of the 2D. 
2D CAT scans are better than 3D when you're dealing with mud fossils. Because mud fossils are, this is like almost 100% mud. And it's, it's almost completely the same everywhere because it's been invaded. It's called nucleophilic substitution and invasion. And it, it comes in, it brings the nucleophiles in, and it sends the other ones out. So it replaces what was here. But wherever you have like a membrane, like this is a membrane, those have a, just a taste of a difference because they're a different. And I'll show you the, the other one here. Hold on. At the very back, this is looking from the back of the fingertip. And that's the bone right there. And you see how it's offset? Yeah. That's because this is a thumb. That's his thumb. And I can see, take your thumb, take your right hand thumb, and pinch the lower bone, and you're going to see that there's meat hanging off to the right side. Mm. Do that. Do you, can you feel it? Yeah. That's this meat right here. This is a, a right hand thumb. The bone is over here, just like on your hand. The tendon is right here. And the other tendon is right here. They're exactly the same, only one's black and one's white. And that's because this one here, the little hole right there is the vein. And that's black. And this one here is the artery. And they run out because there's no restrictions to them. And that lo looks white. All right, so this again is a 2D of the back of the fingertip and you would never see this you wouldn't see this you wouldn't see this you'd know something was different here but you wouldn't see it so clearly as this bone now here's a 3d uh oh i guess i don't have any 3ds up here but your the dna test came back as human 100 percent match is that right Absolutely. These are the three tests. Three mud fossil samples sent off DNA extraction, PCR, DNA sequencing, and analysis. This goes back to almost 10 years ago. And this was a this is a fabulous lab. These people know what they are doing and they got assaulted for doing this. Did they? Oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes. In what Everybody way? Does. They fire people. If this guy didn't own his own lab, I can guarantee you he'd be unemployed. They don't they don't like this. They fired Mark Armitage when he came up with even just finding soft tissue in a dinosaur bone. They they said, "Oh, that just proves the age of these dinosaurs being hundreds of millions of years old." And they fired him. He sued and he he won. Wow. Now they did all of the, this was a very serious test. I wanted it done. I said, I want no positive possibility that this is, is going to be wrong. They did negative controls on all the samples. They did all of these stainings and this and that. Excellent quality DNA, excellent quality DNA sequence obtained from the 36 inch tip, that big long fingertip, three inch long tip and from the lung sample all right those two had the best the the, the muddy fingertip had still it was still 100 percent human he said no question whatsoever it just didn't have the same same density these were just like raw blood now here's what it is homo sapien that's my modern modern human mitochondrial cytochrome b and d loop region that's modern Mm. And the lung, the same thing, homo sapien. And that's all I wanted to test for, that it was absolutely no question it was human. And yes, it was. And here is the sequences, the CTAGs, the, the um, proteins. What you need to do is match what's called a genomic signature under genomic footprint, singer, fingerprint. And if these all of these things are in these right orders, in these certain areas when they do the data blast and they run it through a blast they call it. here it is right here 
they did all the DNA sequencing and they used 80 to 100 base pairs, which is that's as much as you need. And he said it was way more than that. Mm -hmm. And a DNA sequencing generated for the 36 inch tip and for the lung sample were submitted individually into a nucleotide blast search using the National Center for Biotechnology Information, whereby each DNA sequence matched to all DNA sequences contained in that database. And this was the results. The results of the BLAST search was just what you see right below, Homo sapien, Homo sapien. So that's what happened. Now, and, and this I submitted to Yale, and they would not, they, they refused to allow me to, to, to interact with them. And I, I sent this to them back in uh, 2015. And then they did a paper on exactly what I said to them in 2016. They saw my research. And then here's their paper. I'll show you in a second. Mm. All right. Here's their paper. Uh, you see this? This is in 2016. That's a year later. And I talked, to, I submitted all my stuff to this guy right here, Derek Briggs. Mm. He stole it. And you know who paid for this? NASA. NASA paid them to do this, and they came up with the exact same thing I came up with. Except that they said, oh, there was only, they, they were only up to three feet long. Here, listen to this. This is from their, their paper that they put on campus. This is 2016. This is a year later. They're announcing their big discovery, which was my discovery. Mm -hmm. Now, here, here it goes. They're saying that they're cementing a theory about how these creatures solidified. And they're saying that they, the Yale-led research team collected marine fossils. And it's, uh, the whole world was covered with marine fossils because the marine fossils, the world was flooded. Yeah. And they said sandstone around the world, the entire world was covered by this. And it said... It left soft body creatures hundreds of millions of years ago. No, 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 no. This was not that long ago. And here's what it says. It says they call it the Etacara biota. All that means is Etacara is a place in Australia, a name of the place. And biota means creatures. So creatures from this place in Australia takes its names from the deposit in South Australia. But the fossils are found worldwide. That's because it was worldwide, because it was just a gigantic flood worldwide. And they say the rocks range from 540 to 580 million years old. They're not that old. They're, every one of them is, every one I have, I picked up off the surface of the earth. I didn't even dig for this stuff, 90% of it. All right, the creatures themselves were small, they say, which they, they, there was tiny ones, yes. And as large as one meter. No, very, very much larger. And they say they lived on the sea floor. Well, that's because there was nothing but sea floor. How could they say it was found worldwide and they were living on the sea floor? The sea floor was the world at that time. Now, many of them are outright bizarre in appearance and do not resemble any organism alive today. They were all wiped out. And then this was the Yale author. And she says, we would like to understand their, if their relationship to the complex animals that evolved shortly thereafter. They think these were only jellyfishes and stuff. Let me read to you what they say. This is important you understand this. Mm -hmm. Listen to what the words out of Yale is. Are these organisms some sort of failed evolutionary experiment? Mm. Yes, they were. They were wiped out because Zeus said, this is out of control. We got to flush this place. And that's what he did. He sent Venus to destroy everything, and it did. And it's called the Great Dying. This is the Triassic Era. I just did a video on this yesterday about the Triassic Era Great Dying. And this, I have it in, because all my stuff is Triassic. Now, it says... Is it some failed evolutionary experiment? Yes, it was. It says the big part is trying to figure out how the fossils were able to form, which I know how they form. Now, listen to this. This is how wrong they are. It says 
the animals were entirely soft bodied. They lived before even shells, teeth, or bones existed, which are typically the only parts of an organism to become fossilized. No, absolutely not. Mayan are fossilized because of mud fossilization, which is called fascia facilitated fossilization, which is the paper I presented to them a year earlier. All right, so now, now they know it was a dissolved silica. All right, it was the dissolved silica in the oceans. At that, the only reason it was there was because of the siliceous ooze, because the Earth was impacted by Venus, and everything, all the oceans and the ooze went everywhere, and it hardened up everything almost instantaneously. And it says this enabled the the sand around the animals to turn them into rock and occur over a matter of hours or years rather than taking a time frame of thousands to millions of years. It happened not too long. I'm doing a, a study right now in how long it does take using some silicates and some mice. <laughs> but you got to do it in hot water. The, the oceans were boiling. When this happened, the oceans were literally boiling. And if you read the Colburn Bible, it says the, the oceans were boiling at this time. It's one of the first words that came out of Colburn Bible. I don't have it up here. But anyway, it says this happened very, very quickly. And they say that they did all this special work. And this is the guy taking credit for it, Derek Briggs. Hmm. He's the curator of the Yale Museum of Natural History. This is his big freaking title. Yeah. I presented all my work to him and I told him I worked with his assistant and everything. We had a CAT scan done in the University of Texas because he said well, that's the only place we'll accept a CAT scan from. It was terrible. They refused to even even answer the phone after they did it. And 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 it ended up with police and lawyers calling me, telling me to stand down, not to talk to these people. They don't want to talk to me. Wow. That's that's how bad it is. And he 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 plagiarized me. And this is fraud. Academic fraud is very, very simple. There is not a big issue with understanding academic fraud. It consists of a deliberate effort to deceive and includes plagiarism, which I just showed you, misrepresentation of historical sources. I don't know if they did that or not. They certainly didn't do it right, but not deliberate and possibly. But selective suppression of unwanted or unaccepted results. They didn't want my results, so they rejected it. And theft of ideas. Some cases of academic fraud are easy to detect and prove, like my case against Yale. Now, at some point, I would like to do that. Probably, the, you know, this is 10 years ago, so it probably they're free and clear by now. I have no idea. I don't care. I just want people to understand the reality of the world we live in. It's just a bunch of liars. The yeah. Liars and frauds. And, they don't, and I'm telling you, it's right across the board. It's not just this. This is just, this destroys our eternity because they won't let you think about God. Don't think about God and go to Yale and talk about God and Jesus Christ and the religions and the, you know, all of these giants. Let me tell you something right now. There's not one single society, culture, region, denomination, you know, not one has, has failed to speak about giants, mm -hmm. dragons, and gods, and extraterrestrials, and battles in the heavens, and a great flood. Not one. Not one. The only one that disregards all that is academia. And academia now has become our, our way of life. They have overtaken everybody and they say, we now own you. If you don't say what we tell you to say, we will destroy your life. And they can with them just one single letter. It's called an F for failure. They can make you a failure, you're done. And the only way you become a failure is if you refuse to accept the bullshit that they force you to repeat. 
And then you become a failure. And, you, and you're not going to be accepted by anybody. And I mean nobody. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. Nobody will accept you if you go against mainstream. And that's what happened to me 15 years ago. I was basically excommunicated from reality from the rest of the world. And um, it's just what happens. And um, it's okay because I, I have found eternity. And that's more important to me than this particular realm right now. Yeah. So, so and it's, uh, that's, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, could you just explain that a bit more in terms of you found eternity? Well, yeah, I'm looking for Jesus Christ. He's the only one, if you look back through Apollodorus and all of the ancient texts, and Urantia, Urantia and all of that, we were designed to be a violent, nasty, vicious, jealous, incompassionate realm. And it, you can see it right now. It's, it's, it's everywhere. There's, yeah. no, there's no love. There's no compassion. There's no empathy. I mean, there is, but it, it's, it's um, not by our leaders, not by the ones that are in control. And they are the ones that all of this text was written about, that they are going to be false, false gods. They're going to be liars and frauds. And, um, and even Jesus right here, this right here, look at what Jesus said right here. You see this? You can see my screen now? Yep. Jesus said, whoever has come to understand the world has found a corpse. <laughs> And I'm showing you that's what the world is, is a corpse. Mm -hmm. And whoever has a found a corpse is superior to the world. So if you let your mind open and you can see this, you're superior to the world because the world can't see this. Mm. And even my light research, I say 100% of everything there is, is biology. And 100% of everything there is started from light. And here's number 50. What does Jesus say here? He says, Jesus said, if they say to you, where did you come from? Say to them, we came from the light, the place where the light came into being on its own accord. Where does that happen? The only place that happens is the sun. Mm -hmm. The sun has to be our God. Let's read that again. Just to be sure, if they say to you, where did you come from? We came from the light. And the place where the light came into being on its own accord, nobody had to spit sparks, nobody had to turn anything on. It established its own self and became manifest through their image. All right, manifest means it, it developed into the image of the the gods apparently they made us in their image and the light became manifest from their image if they say to you is it you say we are its children we are the children of that light we are the elect we have been specially selected our light our particles are the elected ones of the living father we are special my friends we are literally living gods selected by the Father, by the living Father. If they ask you, what is the sign of your Father in you? Say to them, it is movement and repose. You know what that means? Movement and repose. Ask Tesla what that meant. It means vibration. Mm -hmm. It means you either are light moving as a particle and in flux, or you are light at rest and is, is just a mass not moving. It's movement or repose. Repose means you're just not moving. Mm -hmm. That's pretty interesting stuff right there. Oh, just those two statements. Now, when you take the top of this, this is from the Nag Hammadi text, the Gnostic. And this was only discovered in 1945. I'm going I'm to talk like nobody understands this, like I'm a big... Yes, please. Yeah, you because know, I, I don't mean to speak down to anybody. No. I'm just going to talk like, anyway, you know you, you know what I mean. No, you, yeah, do anyway. 
you're doing fantastic. It's it's um absolutely. I'm gonna run as a teacher, so to speak. Now this is from Doubting Thomas, who was Jesus Christ's scribe. And he wrote down all of these secret sayings the living Jesus spoke. So he's walking around, he's saying, Hey Tommy, write this down. <laughs> all right, this is big, this is huge. Write it down, don't screw it up. <laughs> so what does he do? Doubting Thomas writes this down. He says, number one, the first thing out of his mouth is Jesus said, whoever finds the interpretation of these sayings will not experience death. Well, what does interpretation mean? What do you think interpretation? Do you have to figure out every little word what it means? No. Interpretation is very simple. It's the act of explaining the meaning of something. This is my interpretation. I'm doing it right now. Mm -hmm. so if I am doing that, maybe I won't experience death. It says, whoever finds the interpretation, the act of these sayings will not experience death. Then number two is another killer. Jesus said, let him who seeks, which I was instructed to seek. My, my message was go look in the woods. And I did, and I found the giants. And then when I started searching on the giants, I had another message that came up on my screen. I swear to God, this is absolute 100% fact. It said, these things are for you to see and for others as a test. And I just fell to the floor, and I just couldn't believe what I saw. And I couldn't find out where that message came from. I never could. It went away and never came back. But as you, you look it up, these things are for you to see and for others as a test. It doesn't exist. No, I couldn't find anywhere where I could possibly came from. Anyway, it says, let he, he who seeks, which I was seeking, continue seeking until he finds. I found. Mm -hmm. When he finds, he will become troubled. Yes, absolutely. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And he will rule over the all. Now, whatever that means, I don't know. But you are here. If you read that book, Urantia, that is just stunning. Jesus Christ was sent here to fulfill his seventh request, which was to become human, to, be, to understand humanity, to understand compassion and pain of suffering and feeling. He was sent here to complete his, his fulfillness to become divine and without experiencing what his his cre creatures were because he owns us jesus christ owns us we are his creatures he had to become aware of every little feeling that we have which is jealousy hatred violence and he came out on the other side of it saying don't resort to that kind of kind of activity you do you ruin yourself and i won't want you i will not want you and he showed us that by such a horrific way of dying mm. and 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 submitting himself to that he didn't have to submit he could have gone and hid he came riding in and and he said they said to him tell your disciples to shut up and he said if i tell them to shut up the very stones will cry out. And that's exactly what's happened right now. He's exactly what he said. He said, the very stones will cry out. And that's what's happened. And th this is just nightmare stuff, man. Some of this, there's no way to explain. Absolutely no way to explain. And, um, but some of it makes a lot of sense. And um, Jesus said, I have, I have come to cast fire upon the world. And see, I am guarding it until it blazes. Well, it's on fire now, Jesus. Mm -hmm. It is on fire. There is no passing that away. It is on fire. He says, the heavens will pass away, and the one above it will pass away. He's on his seventh heaven, it appears. Which you have to go and die seven times and be resurrected into a new spiritual awakeness and bring that knowledge with you. That's what the Urantia said. And boy, I'll tell you, that thing just, 
it just freaked me out when I'm reading it. And anyway, um, all of these things are going to pass away. The dead are not alive, and the living will not die. In the days when you consumed what is dead, which is what we do, we're, all we're doing is eating what's dead. You made it what is alive. So we have turned the dead things back into life again. When you come to dwell in the light, which I'm showing you the light, what will you do? On the day when you were one, you became two. But you, when you became two, what will you do? That's a head scratcher, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> literally when you come to dwell in the light you want to see something about light interesting let me show you something about light uh where is it light is nothing like we were taught is it, you can you can accelerate light Light is made of particles. Well, that's what I told you earlier. I got told the, the teacher wouldn't let me um, not say that light traveled in straight lines. Oh, yeah. It's, it's crazy. They, 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 I, like I told you, they wanted to give me a B instead of an A. I said, no, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, how could these people be so weak-minded? Look at this. And I sent this to Fermilab. Watch this. This is light from a red pulse laser. All right, what are you seeing? You're seeing wave after wave after wave, and these are the pulsations. Yeah. There's a particle, or a, a bunch of particles, actually, in each one of these waves. And the forward leading wave is the beginning wave of this, of this laser. Now, it has a magnetic field surrounding it. It's th that magnetic field is this big. The particle is tiniest it's, it's almost impossible to see it's so small but the wave is huge and every other one of these other particles in the air all of these little white particles these are gases and heat particles and so forth and they get excited too because they have a field surrounding them so we're pushing our field against their field so they have to get the hell out of the way now this is just beginning to accelerate otherwise you wouldn't even see this the only reason we even see this wave is it's starting to accelerate. Now, whoops, I got to go back to here. Let me drag over some stuff. Hold on. All right, this will give us some fodder here. <clears throat> all right. If you're a geek at all, you, you've heard of Higgs bosons. All right, a Higgs boson is a particle that they, oh, they're just unbelievable. They found it. We finally found it. Well, this is a simulated Higgs event from CERN. Yeah. Now, I went to the University of, of um, Geneva. For particle physics i took there and i showed them all my, my stuff and we interacted and it was very good because they didn't they didn't dismiss anything i said but they want to work with these huge particles thinking it's different than working with the particles i work with which is light they can see the same stuff i see but i see it in such more perfectness here's what we see you see all the little stuff they see mm -hmm. light this is what they want to see these are Higgs fields, and these are individual Higgs fields, not just a big slurpy mess. Those are the fields that are the same fields we started with, which is light. You see this? This is light. Yeah. There's nothing more than a Higgs field. But we're starting with that. Then we accelerated that light field, which is here, which is nothing more than a Higgs and we accelerated the particle right out from the field. It's, it's breaking the speed of magnetism right now. It's supposed to be magnetically held in this wave. It's now accelerated, just like you break the speed of light with, a, with an airplane, with a jet. 
And here it can't get through the venturi, so it explodes and the black particle separates from the white. And you're going to say, what black particle and what white particle? Well, here they are right here. Coming down the line, this is what a photon looks like. It's black and white particles together. That's dipole electrons. Each one of these is what I call electron. They call them gluons. And they're the smallest particle that exists. The muon is the black, and that is dark matter. That's the dark matter they've been looking for. It's been right here all the time. And that is attached to a white particle, which is the point particle. And Fermilab shows these. Here's Fermilab's thing. Let me see if I can get to Fermilab. Hold on. All right, Fermilab, hold on. And they told me to go away. Fermilab point particles. You see those particles? Mm hmm. Those are the same particles we found. And they, these are the smallest particles that exist, they say. And they're right. I agree with that. And they say that one of them has all the weight. So the summary is that extended particle has a fixed size, the black one, and it has a fuzzy edge around it, yes. The point-like particles are just an abstraction. They have a zero size. They have no weight. to. to they must be like a tiny, like a soap bubble. It's a bubble of energy. And it has almost no mass whatsoever. It must have something. But he says it's a zero size particle. But it, it's not. It can't be zero size and still have a feel. It's got to be like a soap bubble. Almost the same thing. And when it interacts with other soap bubbles, they glow. And the more they interact, the bigger they glow. But this is Fermilab. Now look at my stuff. There's the same particles. All right, here they are. Hold on. Well, they're the same particles. Now, let me show you. I got another shot of this. All right, here it is right here. You can't miss it. These two are the one I just showed you from Fermilab. You agree? Yeah. yeah. All right. There's the black one. Never changes side. Fixed. Fixed fixed does not change size might have a glowy edge around it yes it does fixed 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 glowy edge absolutely not fixed not fixed this one's bigger this one's smaller why is this one bigger why 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 do you think that one's bigger than the other one i don't know give it a thought think about it why why would that one be bigger all right, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you see these little white particles here in the front, these little glowy ones? Yeah. This thing has to plow through those. Remember I showed you the wave coming through? The yeah. leading edge of the wave, the white particle, which is this right here. This is this. This is the enhanced version where it's you, you see the energy levels. This you just see a black and white. Mm -hmm. But the leading one is banging against all these other fields. So it gets, it glows as a response. They glow as a response. It's push to shove, push to shove. This is pushing, these are shoving back. These get pushed out of the way. This has to plow through them all. So it just keeps building up energy. Then it flips. Then this one comes in front. They call it the muon wobble. And that's exactly what it does. It wobbles. And I can show that too. So now, as we accelerate, this is the acceleration phase. The particle is actually being pulled out. And here, the black separates from the white. Only the white can get through. Here it is up close in person. The black can't get through. The white comes through as a shower. You see this? This is from CERN and Fermilab. The muon neutrino, which is the black ball, turns into what they call a sterile muon, all by itself, not interacting with anything. It's all by itself. And the white one turns into a shower, which is right here. This is the holy grail 
of energy. They refuse to talk to me. Ten years now. Ten freaking years. This could be free, free energy right here. So is this is this the um, basis of the free energy that Tesla was pulling out of the ether? Absolutely. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. It, it, when you have the black and white one together, all right, let's take this one step at a time. You shoot out a particle of light, and it is a particle. There's no question whatsoever, and it is in all the different colors. Here's the green. is the same as the, the blue and the, the same as the red, and that's what a photon looks like. As it builds up energy, it, it goes through these phases over here. See that right there? These over here, they're not fully fledged photons. The only time you get a photon is when it really bangs into something. Mm. Now, the reason we're seeing them before they bang into something, they don't see these. Nobody else can see these. The only reason we see them is because we made something for them to bang into, them, which was the back pressure. And here's the back pressure right here. Here they come through. You see that these are the these are neutrinos. This phase right here. They're not photons yet. And they're not going to be photons until they bounce off of something. Now, this is another flavor of fruit neutrino. See, this one runs up and down. This mm -hmm. one's flat, like an Oreo cookie. Now, right in line, dead nuts in line with the Venturi. The Venturi is right here, exactly right there. These think they have hit a wall because this is pushing back so hard against them. That yeah. they think they have hit a wall, so they become the photon, which bounces back at you, we see as light. You following us? I am. Oh, you are. Okay. So yeah. here, coming through. You're never going to see these. Up here, you don't see anything. There's nothing up here. But they're there. You see them here, and you see them here, and then you see them up here. When this wave comes back, this is a wave, and it's coming back this way. And that wave is bashing against this one. So when they hit here together, it thinks it just hit a black wall. Mm -hmm. That's when it turns into a photon. This thing hits it thinks it just hit a black wall. It, they, they turn into photons. This is, it didn't hit a wall yet. It's sort of a, a, a neutrino. This one hit a wall. This one hit a real hard wall. And you see it as a very, very clear photon. Now, the same thing happens with the green. But normally you don't see these. And what you do see is this. Up in here, you don't see any any photons at all, right? You don't see any waves up here. There's no waves. How did that get here? Hmm. How did this get here? How did that get here? How did this get here? We know how this one got here. Because it's accelerating. These are here because they're, they're being pushed back at. Remember I told you you don't see a photon until it's getting pushed like yeah. a hidden wall? Because that wave's coming back. This is coming back so hard that these thinks they hit a wall. They think they hit a wall. This is this literally, and I'm not kidding you. I mean this in every aspect. This is a subatomic nuclear explosion. Mm -hmm. This is fission. And this right here, when they come back together, is fusion. All right, fission means to divide the two particles, the black and the white. That's called fission. And when they come back together, they fuse back together. It's called fusion. Now, remember, we started with a light wave. Let's call that a Higgs field. All right, because that's what a Higgs field looks like, just like that. So let's call it a Higgs field. It's a light wave. We crushed this because this is a venture. This is like a V-shaped. comes down this way and this way. When the light gets in here, it can't get out. It has to crush its fields against each other's fields. The white ones can get small, so they squirt through. The black ones say, I can't get through there. They say, well, stay out. Get, out, get back. And they keep going bang, 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 squirting this out through the other side. And at the same time, they keep creating these reverse electromagnetic fields. You see them way back here? That is so much energy. It's off the energy scale. Yeah. All we got to do is put a harvester right over here before the white gets back to the black, and we can collect that energy and have free energy. 
And what, what shape would a harvester look like? Just look, look like a solar cell, just something flat for this to, to absorb into. It'd have to be something that wants to absorb that energy. And I would use transition metals. You have something called proscovites now. And they're all, all transition metals are is different charged metals. And they will accept different charges. And these are going to be all different energy levels. White is all energy levels. So you want to be able to absorb all these different energy levels. So you need something that can absorb multitudes of, of different energy levels. And that's transition metals. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that can work. But anyway, and they're working on that right now. They per peroscovites, they call them. So what have I shown you? I showed you that light can accelerate. Light is a wave and a particle. When you come through that accelerator, right over here, you see the Higgs start, start appearing again? You see them here? Yeah. Well, what do they look like if you were looking into these Higgs? Here's what they look like here. Those are where the Higgs start. The white is smashing into all of the black particles. And when it does, they reattach. You see this white one? Yeah. I don't know how clearly you can see this, but you see the little black particle right there attached to the white? Yeah. You can actually make that out? Yeah. All right. These two are, are, are recombining. And they're spinning as a disk. You see the little black ones are trying to get in there, trying to hug into it. The black wants so desperately to be reattached to the white. That's what electricity is. The white seeks the black. The black just wants to be laying around, and the white seeks the black. That's what gravity is. It's dark matter. It's that black particle right here. And the white one wants to be attracted to that black so desperately that when it comes through, the accelerator, it instantly jumps back in. Instantly. At this far out, the white is now giving it enough ability to jump back in. And they, the blacks will stand right on top of each other. They don't care. They, they go to the center. And you said that's what gravity is. That is what gravity is. That is what gravity is. Black. And it's also dark matter. Well, I've, I've heard gravity described as relative density. As would, would that tie in with this? Um, yes, because the bigger the mass, the more the density. Yeah. And the more the density, the more the gravity. The more the density means the more dark matter. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to show you this. I wasn't able to before, but I'm going to try. Let's see if we can see my dipole electron flood theory. Uh, that was it. Yeah, but this, that's not the one. Ah. This is the history of it. Let's see. All right. That's well, we're, we're having to rewrite history now, aren't we? <laughs> everything, 100%. <laughs> not just history. And I'm not kidding you. No, everything. We, yeah, hold on. Let me see if I can find dipole electron flood theory if it's up here. Oh, here it is, right here. All right, here's, here's, here's dipole electron flood theory. This is what a proton looks like. Now, if you don't know what a proton is, a proton is nothing more than one of the smallest particles they say exists. It makes up all atoms. So a hydrogen would be one proton, which is this, and one little electron. It is not. Hmm. What it is is 1,800 and... 25 or so dipoles and a dipole is the right here is what it is the black and white together that's a dipole now remember i showed you a photon is like this yeah all right well the dipole is made out of a black and a white particle they're muons and electron neutrinos and that's all that exists these are the only two particles that exist it's the only two that exist they have a particle zoo, they call it, which said, oh, I got this and quarks and this is and da 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 da. No, absolutely not. These are just different masses of these two particles. And, and trust me, there's no way they can account for isotopes. None. 
mm. using the standard model. Isotopes are are particles that just don't have enough particles. They're they're atoms that have less and less particles or more and more particles than the stable, which is the middle is 1823. So anyway, this it, it could possibly look I know for a fact now, I'm almost 100% sure, all the black goes to the center and all the white surrounds it. But there's like, probably, in my mind, I can't see any difference, is there's, there's, the, there's just as many of these as there is of these. And they're all dipoles like bar magnets. And when they glue together, they are the gluons. But when they're in a mass of a photon or a proton or whatever, a photon, you can see them. In a proton, you never see these because the black goes to the center. All you see is the stuff that bounces back at you. And the only thing that bounces back at you is the white, the glowy part. That's the only part. That's why they say we've never seen dark matter. You've only seen it because it's in the center of the white matter that bounces back at you. Yeah. You're never going to see it. And the only time you do see it is when it sits on top. You see this? Yeah. We, you don't see dark matter in here. You see it here because it's sitting on top of the white. It would never be on top. It would always be behind the white. In a, in a proton, it's inside the white. You follow me? Yep. So when you look at anything, all you ever see is the white that bounces back. You're never going to see the dark matter. But we know everything has a weight. If everything has a weight, and the white has no weight to it, where's the weight come from? The weight comes from the black that we never see. It's inside of everything that we look at, but the only thing that we look at, everything is coated with this white electrons. It's like it painted with white electrons, and every other electron that hits it bounces back. So we never see the dark matter until you put the black on top of the white. It's because it's just obscuring the white. The black does not emit, it doesn't absorb, and it doesn't reflect. That's the, the signature of dark matter. You want to see something cool? Yes, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so, I'm soaking it all up. All right. Well, I'm, I just showed you the black and the white. All right. So let's see if we can see those separated in an atomic bomb blast, which we can. All right, now, I'm going to show you the separation of the powers. Derek, why don't you take your pants off? Take your pants off. <laughs> Hi, my name is Derek Lewis. All right, Derek, enough, brother. Here, watch. Now, this is an atomic bomb blast. Now, I'm going to slow this down to its very slow setting, and I am going to turn the sound off. Now, this is teapot apple II. This is the effect of atomic bomb going off. Now, here's the, here's the setup. They're out here bringing out all this stuff. They're, they're going to set up cameras in the back here, facing away from the explosion so they're protected. They're not destroyed. They can see what's going on. And this is the test house. They're going to get the truck away from here, and then they're going to shoot off a bomb, and they're going to see what happens to all this stuff. Now, I'm watching in slow motion. What you're going to see is a brilliant blast. I'm going to stop it at each phase. All right, so we get ready. All right, it's going it's running real, real slow. So let's take a little while. Now, here, here's going to be the blast. Now, here it is. What you just, it's just going off. That's the atomic bomb. Everything turns white as snow. Hmm. All that's happening is those particles that have no weight whatsoever, the white particles, they're fusing into all these other particles. They're not pushing. There's no push whatsoever. Watch what happens. This is all energy. Look what's happening. The house is just smoking up. It didn't move. You're not seeing the house move, not even an inch. Hmm. The, you see the wires back here? They're just smoking up. The poles are smoking up. Anything that has any ability to combust. The metal tank here does not combust because it's metal. It's not, it, it has no ability to, to combust. Now watch. I'm going to run a little longer here. No movement whatsoever. None. Zero. 
I just stopped it again. It's just vaporizing. The white has no mass whatsoever. No mass. It has all the energy, no mass. It didn't push the house. It didn't break anything whatsoever. The poles, the wires, just smoking. So it's absorbing the electrons, but they're not moving. It has no mass, but it is being pushed forward because of the black. The only reason it's infused here, it's separated from the black because of the atomic interaction, which is what we did using the Venturi. We separated the white from the black. This would be just like our white stuff hitting the house right here. And then we open up the Venturi and let the black stuff come in. And now the black stuff is coming. But you watch, it's still just vaporizing. Not a single thing has moved. All the stuff has burnt. You see it's gone? Mm -hmm. There's no more burning. No more. The, all the stuff on the front is burnt off. It's done. The, the roof is just now vaporizing. It's done too. There is no more ability to absorb anything. But now comes the black. Here it comes. Pow. You see that? I just stopped it. That's the black has all the weight. Those are the muons. So we've just seen the white has been separated from the black, and we've proven that the white has no mass, and the black has all the mass. And it just keeps going. Now watch. It'll turn around and come back. You see, the, see it turn around and come back? <laughs> Why did it do that? Why did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. The only reason I could think of is it's, it left a void, an empty space, well, yeah. an empty region in space, because all the black and all the white has left that area. So it's, it's, it's left, and now everything's got to come back. I'm telling you, this stuff gets deep. Oh, this is really, I mean, while I'm looking at it and thinking about it, I'm also thinking of the black sun. Have you... What, to talk to me about it. What do you mean? Well, I've been reading a lot about the black sun and um, that being a light source at the center of the earth. And I'm just thinking, well, we've got this the white and the black particles there as above, so below. And, you know, this is where my mind's going. <laughs> Well, what is, tell, tell me, what is a black sun? What do you mean by that? Well, I'm not exactly sure. It's popping up a lot. Um, it's popping. You know how things pop up in consciousness. There's, you know, the um, the logo for the um, uh, what they call the Vril Society that Hitler was obsessed with is a black sun. And in the in the recent June two movie, apparently there's I haven't seen it yet, but apparently there's a black sun in that as well. So it's it's just in my consciousness. And when I saw the the two particles, one white, one black, it got it just got me thinking about that. And I'm just wondering if it could be completely nothing, but these things pop into my head. Well, as far as the sun goes, you see, this is the other thing. They don't understand mm. light. As I showed you, they do not understand light. And they don't understand the global warming. And they don't understand the sun. Well, I, I put it to you that I think they do understand. They just hide it. That's possible, but I, th that is possible. And I've got a question for you as well. Sorry, don't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right, so I had a strange experience uh, with the sun, an interesting experience. I'll just briefly tell you it to see what your opinion is, if, if I may. Yeah. Um, I went to a stone circle in England a year ago, and uh, when we got there, it was a place called Arbor Low, and it's the intersection of nine ley lines. It's the only one in the whole world that's the intersection of nine ley lines, or dragon lines, as they are also known. And while I was there, I made a film about this. Um, we found these square blocks all around on top of the ley lines outside of the circle. This is an ancient circle. And these stones, presumably, are actually pieces of something that has deceased. Firstly, Secondly, yeah. the ley lines are the dragon lines, so this is connected. But then the sun changed in front of when we unblocked these energy lines, the sun changed in front of our eyes into a circle with a black outline. And it, and it was like it had a white particle zipping around the exterior. And then the inside of the sun turned into 
this plasma and then it started emitting different lights in different colors and i had seven there were seven of us that witnessed it we couldn't catch it on camera and i've seen it twice since and i'm just wondering if you've got any insights into something like that if you've ever seen anything like that because you said at the beginning of this show that um the sun is really god so i'm very interested in uh how this wait a minute i said what what did i say about the sun oh, i bet i bet i bet i got it wrong now but i'm, I'm sure you said that the sun the sun was god oh yeah 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 i agree with that yeah, yeah. well it's our, our 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 regional god yes our regional god okay yeah that makes sense yeah, there's going to be one gigantic god somewhere that's in charge of everything. And yeah. in that book of Urantia, that's another thing that they talk about. They have to select rulers for different regions. And and Jesus Christ was sent here to become, to, to, to fulfill his, his um, you know, apprenticeship, basically to become an a ruler of some vast region. I don't know. But here you, you're talking about, look at this. You ever see anything like that? On a on a magic mushroom journey, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is taken with a cell phone of our moon. What this is, I have no idea. Oh whoa. Why is that there? Why are these little things going back and forth from Atlantis? <laughs> Why do we have a pyramid up in the sky? Well, yeah. And it's to me, like they're going inside and outside back and forth. Yeah. And what is this stuff on top of the moon? The only time you see anything glow, there's energy. Yeah. And any time you see any colors, it means there's a shift in some kind of a frequency or it's giving off some sort of a frequency. Now, why is the top of the moon blue and the bottom of the blue moon is more reddish? Well, I, that's weird because I, I had um, a water electrolysis kit out earlier and it was talking about the different colors that the water will go to represent different, it's just frequencies, isn't it? It's different chemicals, frequencies. Correct. It's yeah. all, frequencies are colors. The, yeah. the more you, you know, we are, we can only see in a certain frequency. And that frequency happens to be, hold on, I got it right here. Very small. Happens to be, yeah, it's a tiny little visible frequency. It's 400 uh, from, uh, boy, my eyes are bad, man. Holy smokes. From about 700 nanometers to four. 400 nanometers, something like that. 700 means it's wider and 400 means it's tighter. So we can only see in there, but it goes up into, you know, it goes way down into radio waves. And sound waves are nothing more than, than the spectrum, too. Every, everything is vibration. Yeah. That's what, that's what Tesla said. Everything's vibration. He was right. Yeah. It's just the, the spectrum is nothing more than vibration. But you do reach a spot in the spectrum, which is called an ultraviolet catastrophe, where you no longer have any more of the white particles. They're gone. And all you have left is the black. And that's when you get into x-rays and gamma rays. They'll kill you. Because all you have left is the black. They don't bounce anymore. They they burn it to you. But anyway, this is... Um, this is... It's so insane. The things that they're saying about the Hub, Hubble telescope and Webb telescope and all this and how far we are. We figured all this out and figured it out. If they don't understand that light slows down in this medium of these fields, light is going to slow down in these fields. Absolutely no question whatsoever. None. Zero. And they know this. Mm -hmm. And they still measure things by light traveling at a consistent speed. This is so interesting. I mean, I can't believe the coincidence. I, st I started talking to the show, talking about what I got kicked out of my physics class for. Was all here, about send, send that to your physics teacher. It's all about light. <laughs> and here we are. Send that to your physics teacher right there. That's Those are light waves. Those are photons. That's what I was trying to say 35 years, 40 years ago. Yep. Yeah. Wow. And blue goes so fast that you can see way over here, you can't even tell it's two particles. 
Hmm. By the time it slows down over here, you can see there's two. So right. in terms of the speed of light, um, mm -hmm. Einstein, I, who I think was a gatekeeper, equals Seb C squared. It, 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 there's, you can't, you're not supposed to be able to go past the speed of light, but I don't believe that. Here it is right here. Where obviously, you can go back faster than the speed of light. Exactly. And I've seen it. I've seen a ship go faster than the speed of light here. Um, well... I didn't actually measure it with a speed gun, but it was extremely, it was instantaneously disappeared, which couldn't be anything other than that, unless it was just changing frequency to a different spectrum. There's so much that we do not know. It's, 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 it's incredible. Now, these ancient texts talking about turning people into stone instantly, that happened, no question. And even, even Ovid, if you read Metamorphosis, by Kafka? No. Is it Kafka? No, no, no. Ovid. Ovid wrote Metamorphosis. Here, hold on a second. Um, the one about the uh, man who changes from a fly. Into no, a uh, this is, this is um, hold on a second. Oh, I see. Yeah. The poem. Metamorphosis is, is, was written by Ovid, but he yeah. wrote this uh, 250 myths he took, and he compiled them all. And he wrote what was written. This was his magnum opus. It was his his special work, and it was extremely widely read. And that's, that's interesting. There's another coincidence because it's the anniversary of Julius Caesar's assassination on the Ides of March, which is the fifteenth of March in three days. Yeah. Well, this was when he was alive. Was during Julius Caesar's reign. It, he was uh, during at the death of Julius Caesar. No, he wrote. 15 books and let me show you what the first words in his books were and he these books were about this the creation the ages of mankind the flood deucalion who was noah pyra which is deucalion's wife noah's wife apollo daphne phaeton all of these creatures which are from the ancient greek myth all right these are down into jupiter europa um, Perseus, Andromeda, these are all the gods. And he gets down to Ajax, Ulysses, the fall of Troy, all of that stuff. Now listen to this. The first words out of his mouth, he says, metamorphosis or transformation is a unifying theme amongst the episodes of metamorphosis. Ovid raises its significance explicitly in the opening lines of his great work here. He says, in nova, fert animus mutatus dicera formos corpora. What does that mean? It means I intend to speak of forms changed into new entities. Accompanying this theme is often violence inflicted upon a victim whose transformation Whoa. Well, listen, becomes part of the natural landscape. Mm. All right, you're with me on this one? I am. All right, accompanying the theme is the violence inflicted upon a victim who becomes part of the natural landscape. Now, listen to the transformations. Listen to the transformations. A great variety among the types of transformations from human to inanimate objects like the Nile, Nile River, like constellations, like animals, like plants, from animals and ants into fungi and mushrooms, from humans from one sex to another, from pebbles, different colored pebbles. The metamorphosis themselves are often located. They, now they talk about, oh, well, it was really, and they didn't really mean this stuff. No, they did mean this. No, stuff. they did. It's literal. Yeah. yeah it's just, the reader realizes he is being had. Bullshit. <laughs> well, this is we, a Wikipedia, is it? Yeah. We've been had. Yeah. This is all real stuff. This actually happened. Wow. This is real stuff, man. Roger, you've given me a lot of homework. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I, I, we've been talking for nearly two hours. Well, you've been talking for nearly two hours, and I'm going to have to go and pick, get, do some children ferrying because I've still got five kids. But 
Okay, can we come back and follow up on this when I've done gone and bought some books and did a bit of reading? <laughs> Absolutely. Just give me a jingle. I'm I'm willing to talk to anybody that's interested. And I find so little of that, my friend. No, this is wonderful. It's been the best university lecture I've ever had. Well, I appreciate that. And 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 what we need to do is just start to discuss these things. I know I've been the one, you know, overwhelming everybody with my statements, but I am backing them up with evidence, and the only time I get to speak, I sort of take over. <laughs> yeah, but that's completely fine. That's why I wanted you to come on and, uh, and and share this stuff with my audience. And you guys watching, if you go to YouTube and type in Mud Fossil University, you'll find Roger's channel there. Uh, is there anything else you want people to find? No, no, that works for me. Mud Fossil is all one word. That's the thing. Mud Fossil is all one word. Mud Fossil University. Yeah. And I, I post daily several times. I just got a suspension. I just got off yesterday, as a matter of fact. So uh, I'm back online, and uh, I'm just I'm just going to keep saying the truth. Out of interest, what did they suspend you for? Oh, I made a statement about biology, about how the human body reacts to to enzymes, and they, they thought it was some, I was trying to make it look like I was giving medical advice, which I, absolutely not. They, they, they took down two of my channels for medical misinformation contained in poetry. Yeah, well, I'm not talking about any of that stuff anymore, because if I get a, if I no. get a strike, I, they'll take my channel away. And Don't be lose it. your channel, please. I hope you've got backups of everything you've done. Uh, not really, but it's all it's out there all people got to do is say, and, and the problem is is that everybody's starting to jump on a bandwagon yeah and there's so much misinformation about this they're talking about oh this is a giant tree this is this this is that the, the, the earth is flat you know and it's going on and on to make it look foolish now so that's what the academics are hoping for that they can yeah. make it look foolish and people will turn away from it well so, it's, it's all about divide and conquer on every level isn't it it is and, and we are led by people that are immortal. They, these gods didn't just go away. They're immortal. That means well, they die. Well, this is the Who's thing. Who's in charge that... now? Who's in charge? Who's mm. running things? Mm. They're well, here. And where are they? Exactly. <laughs> They're okay. running academia. They are behind the Ivy League walls. They are the ones that are forcing us to deny God and to, to accept anything they tell you, you have to accept. And believe me, they are making money hand over fist from analyzing everything there is to analyze and supporting war efforts everywhere in the world. Because war is is production. Production leads to profits. Profit why, why would they be interested in money if they're immortal and that powerful? No, they're interested in, in, in us wanting money uh, yeah they're interested in guiding us to do the wrong things in the pursuit of of wealth they're 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 controlling our lives by saying look if you want to be wise and you want to have a good job you're going to have to go to yale or harvard oh, yeah. or someplace like that. they're going to charge you seventy thousand dollars a year you get that money back don't worry about it yeah. And they go there, and Yale says, you, you say exactly what I say. If I give you this piece of paper that I, I, I give you a, an A, you're going to be a hero, and everybody's going to want you to work for them, and you're going to tell them how much you want, and they'll give it to you. That's why I've been advising everybody to drop out of school and start doing their own research. For, for they them. should, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to probably be a little while before this is accepted. My school, Mud Fossil University, will be the leading school in the world. I'm working on a book right now, and we're working on the backup videos that will back up all. And the book is pretty much done. And what it does is it covers, just I'll give you one thing. This is what it covers. Geology, history, archaeology, anthropology, the timelines, ev human evolution, proof of the flood, all the statements that Velikovsky made and how they interact, ancient myth, and, uh, are they factual or not? All things that we have found, are they from life or not? What's in sp space? Where are the gods? What did the gods say? What are the planets? What are the asteroids? What are the meteorites? 100% and then we, I get into light and, and all that stuff after that subatomic realm. Go take care of your kids. Well, no, no, I want to know how I get this book. How do I, how do I get into the university? Where do I sign up for that? 
well, you just keep an eye on the, the, the videos. It's no more than going to be a cooperative effort between the guy that does my books. I don't have anything to do with the books. I don't profit from them. I don't get involved with them. I just give him all my stuff. He puts the books out. He doesn't make hardly any money on them. I think he makes a dollar twenty-five or something a book, and he takes care of everything. And I just stay out of that. But he's going to do this. This next book, he's done. Oh, I don't know, five or six of my papers and wow. made a million books. Fantastic. They're on Amazon. If you look up on Amazon and look up um, Mud Fossil, Roger Spur, book something like that, they'll come up. But this one's going to be all my work. It's going to be my Magnus Opus, my Magnum Opus. So it's well, going to have everyone. Final, final thought before I run off. Um, yeah. Metamorphosis, the transmogrification of humans into matter, it, it, it does sound a bit like the Great Reset, doesn't it? Well, the, the, what they did, gods can do anything they want. They can be anywhere. We're going to have a reset, no question. It's about to happen very, very, very soon. Have you got an optimistic view on that? Well, optimistically, I'd like it to go for a little longer so I can get more information here. But I think I've reached my my crescendo of what I'm going to be able to absorb as far as, you know, and every, everybody else. I'd like to see everybody else come on board, but I don't think that's going to happen. It's, it's, it's a slow process. And if people are not going to get on board, they're going to have to go through it again. Well, this they, is the thing. Going back to the thing that Jesus said, those that um, see this will not die. That's what. So this is what you're saying is about to happen. Yes, absolutely. We we all have a physical body. There's not one single person's ever not died. So we know that's going away. So how are you going to not die? It's got to be a spiritual rebirth. Yeah. Now, where where do you end up when you do die? And it appears very accurately to me that you can either go to hell or some very very bad place or you can go to where jesus is but you have to follow his rules and his guidance and you have to be enlightened enough to realize this was not bullshit this is true and this is you have to have to fulfill these obligations now i don't know how deep these obligations go i never fulfilled any of them so I don't know how I will be received or not received, but I'm trying like hell now to fulfill the, my calling. And my calling is, is that I am one of the weakest people on earth, and I have been sent here to shame the strong. And there is a big, big, long verse about that. He chose the weakest. He chose the most despised. He chose the most hatred. He did the, the weakest things of the world to shame the strongest things. He chose... The ones that are not to change to, to to destroy the ones that are. Look it up; you'll find it. I'm gonna look that up. Yeah, and yeah. Well, that's, that's me. The consider, it starts out by consider the time of your calling. Jesus cho chose the, the the most despicable things. I mean, it's, it, it, it defines me perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Could define me too. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the lesson today, Roger. It's been a delight and a pleasure to listen to you and meet you. And um, hopefully we'll speak again soon when I've plowed through some books. Okay. It's my pleasure, my brother. And and, and, and we'll do it again. I thank like you it. Yeah. I had a good time. Thank you, friend. Good. Thank you. Take right. care. Take care. Bye-bye.